Right, guys, welcome to the uh, to the how how to use Pinterest to boost your business webinar. And what we'll do is we'll just get kicked right off. It's nice to see that there's so many of you here today, which is just fantastic. Makes it all worthwhile. Can uh, can everybody hear me? Okay, yeah, everybody uh, can see the screen. Okay, if you can't, just type it into the box and let me know. Just before we get kicked off. Every now and again, especially on the screen, you'll see little boxes pop up. I, I, I will apologise for that in advance because uh, it's my Skype and, and no doubt emails will pop up. So unfortunately, I can't switch them off. It just, it's just one of those things. It's just which way everything's set up. But uh, if you can hear everything, just, just give me a, a, a big yes. And, and if you can see everything and then we'll get kicked off. <coughs> Excuse me. Fantastic. It's nice to... Yeah, brilliant. Excellent, guys. That couldn't be better. As I say, I'm, I'm just really chuffed a bit that uh, that there's so many of you here. It's just fantastic. And uh, and, and that the, the webinar is nearly full, which really does make it all worthwhile. So what we'll do is, without further ado, we'll get kicked off. And I'll just make sure that my slides are ticking along okay. Yep. So like I've said before guys, what we are going to do today, we're going to go through how you can use uh, Pinterest to gain massive exposure and maintain it. That's one of the big things, is it's the, the maintaining of it and, and not letting it slip. The second thing is how we drive as much traffic as we can possibly handle. And one of the reasons that I say that is is because basically what, what tends to happen is is that people can end up with too much traffic and they really get stumped with it especially if you if you're using uh maybe three or four different platforms but we'll get into that a little bit uh, a little bit later on i think what most people don't realize is is that search engine optimization within pinterest is just a fantastic uh tool and the google and bing yahoo all the ma the big major search um, search engines really love Pinterest because there's so much goes into it, and and again I'll show you all this as we uh, as we get cracking on. Like I've said, what we want to do is we want to have a wee bit of fun with it, and we we want to make some cash while we're doing it as well. That's the, that's the main thing because basically what you don't want to do, you don't just want to be using. Um, social media platforms just for fun it's nice to engage with people and it is nice to see that uh, you know you can speak to your friends and things like that and that's what Facebook you know was really designed for but basically what we want to be using our social media platforms for especially in a business is to engage and ultimately to to make some money out of it that that's the big thing making money out of it for me is is the paramount thing and again if that isn't what you you know you, your main focus is then probably uh, you need to look at it again especially if you're doing it for a business that's that's the main thing what I will do before we move on because because there are so many of us on on the uh, on the webinar today there's some people that will know me um, there's some people that won't and and what I'll do is I'll just give you a, a quick sort of potted history of who I am what I've done because Basically, what you want to know is you want to know that the stuff that I'm going to be going through with you today and, and all the strategies that I'm going to be um, giving you a, a today and, and, and letting, you, letting you into all my secrets on, uh, on Pinterest, and not only Pinterest, on lots of other things as well, um, on, on social media platforms. I've been doing this now since 1996. Uh, that was when I first got into the web. I think I registered my first domain name, which was just my name, keithmacmean.co.uk and .com, in uh, ninety six, ninety seven. Done lots and lots of different things. I've I've done um, design development. Um, started to get into to uh, blogging seriously probably around about two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand four was when WordPress came out and I really did start to get into it and that was the big thing for me um, was when WordPress really exploded. One of the things that I did do uh, really 
quite early on and and again it's something that we'll go through a little bit later on is don't forget about your email list because most of the the guys who, who obviously have turned up today you all got emails and it'll have, it'll have either come through MailChimp or it'll have come through Airweber. And that's one of the big things is don't forget about your list. Twitter, Facebook, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, they're all fantastic platforms. But your list is the gold, if you like. That's People who, who sign up to your list, sign up to your list because basically they want to hear what you have to say. So don't dismiss your list. Some of the companies that I've worked with... Um, in Cumbria, where I live, um, Lloyd Motors, I worked for CN for a while, looked after all their digital content. People outside of Cumbria, uh, Debenhams, Nectar, Next, uh, Office Depot, the, the shopping channel. I've worked for, with and for some really big companies. So for me, the, the strategic side of, of everything to do with social media is really, really what I enjoy. So basically, that's where I come from. That's where... The stuff that I'm going to tell you today has, has sort of been learned over years and years of experience. So what we'll do, guys, that's, is everybody happy? Is, has anybody got a question that, that they want to ask me just before we move on? We will do a Q&A right at the very end. But if anybody's got a, a burning question before I kick off, just type it into the chat box. Every, I'll just... Take this opportunity to have a, a quick drink of a sip of water. So everyone's still with us, guys. Everybody's still there. Just type a big yes in and that'll be fine. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right, guys. What is Pinterest? Well, Pinterest to me, and, and I think... The, the the sort of the slide that's up there now really does sort of do it justice. It does let you organise things. Um, anything that you find on the web, you can uh, you can save to your pin board. You can create different boards. There's lots and lots of things that you can do with uh, with Pinterest. Now I found out the other day that it actually is Pinterest. The guy who, uh, who the guys who developed it. I was listening to a, a recording that they'd made, and they were terming it as Pinterest because sometimes you hear uh, you hear it pronounced different, like uh, Pinterest, P interest, lots and lots of different ways. But um, the guys, I think it was a week ago that they said uh, Pinterest, so so we'll go with that. I think one of the big things for me for Pinterest is, is just just the visual look of it. There's no ads. There's no, um, there's nothing creeping in on the sides. It's just a, a, a fantastic layout for a, a designer, which basically I am. Um, it, it, it's it's a designer's heaven. So one of the one of the big things for me is, is the layout, the visual layout of it, and that's what you've you've really got to keep looking at. Um, is how you arrange your boards. That is key, actually. It, it's really key. I think of it. And I tend to think of it as like our fridge door. This isn't our fridge door. I was going to take a photograph of our fridge door because there's so much on it, so much stuff just pinned to it. And unlike the office, there's just stuff everywhere. And I tend to use uh, Pinterest in exactly the same way, be it for a, a, a personal account, which I have, and for the business account, which is for my uh, social media academy. But I tend to use it in the same sort of way. So one of the big things is that when you when you sign up to uh, to Pinterest, you have now got the the option. When I first signed up, and probably when a few of you signed up, you didn't get the option. There wasn't a business account. So if you do have a if you do have a um, an ordinary personal account, basically what you can do, you can convert your personal account. Now I have to say I haven't done a. a Basically, what I've done, I've kept my personal account, and I've also opened an account for my social media academy, and I'll, and I'll keep those two separate. And I pretty much do that on 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 all the platforms. I have to say, uh, on Facebook, I have my own personal one, and and that's really quite tightly screwed down. The social media academy on Facebook is really quite open, and anybody can come and anybody can join. 
and I'm not saying there's a right or wrong. All I'm saying is is that it's it's down to you to sort of decide is that what you want to do? Do you just want to use it for business? I think the nice thing about about Pinterest now is you can use it for both. You you can decide either or now. There isn't you know, you don't have to sign up for a personal one. I think on on this slide probably the most important thing is that bit send traffic your way and we will get into this in a bit more depth a, a little later on but that's the big thing for me that was the the, the key sort of uh, reason for me joining it was that people can find and share all your stuff and and i think that's just a fantastic um, option that pinterest has so basically what you can do like i've said before you can click this button here and you can click uh, convert your existing account or you can click new uh, to Pinterest join as a business so if we clicked join as a business then basically uh, what would happen if we clicked sorry join as, as a on your personal account this is what your personal account would look like and this is what my personal account looks like this bit here and I, I'm going to take a wee bit of time on this bit even though I will go over it again is remember that on this bit here this is what the search engines are looking for so in in this little bit here try and get as many keywords into that bit into your into your profile section as you possibly can so if you're a photographer say that you're a photographer if you're a wedding photographer say that you're a wedding photographer remember that it's it's got to be legible and it's got to make sense but you do have to get it in there that what it is that you actually do because that's where the search engines will pick it up now don't worry about all this all this side because you can actually come back and change it whenever you want put your website address in as well and there is the it says there where your uh, website's verified i'll go into that in a, in a little bit uh, more detail later on how you would find it you just click on your about um on your profile and it, then you click the settings button and that's the the best the, the quickest way to get to your profile so if you wanted to create a business profile and you, and like I've said you don't need to have a, a personal profile anymore if you just wanted to go for a business account then you can choose what your business type is now there's a, a list a drop down list and don't worry about it if there's nothing that suits what you do um, because right at the very bottom is one called other and then on the other then you can sort of fill in you know what you do what you don't do so remember choose a business type then your contact name all your details what whatever it is that you want to do uh, that you want to put in there use your email address username think about this uh, I don't know give it a give it a wee bit of thought I mean for for my own one I mean I'm sort of lucky because Mac means an unusual surname if you put something into there that someone's already registered then basically what will happen is uh, it'll come up underneath and it'll tell you that someone's registered it try something else and but just think about your username make sure that it's relevant to your business don't you know if if you are the business and like me for some of the things I do you know my business name would be Keith McMain then I'm quite happy to put Keith McMain in there if it's for the social media academy then I tend to put social media academy in there but try it because it he, uh, Pinterest will let you know if it's available or not this is the bottom half of of the uh, of the setup so as you can see there it says upload an image or refresh from Twitter so you can use your, your Twitter uh, profile picture as well if you want now because the bulk of the time for me I am the business I'm sort of seen as the business I always try and get a picture of me in there good bad or indifferent don't worry about it if you are the business but remember to put uh, an image in there I, I just put one over that that says Keith McMain social media Academy over the top of it but if you're using a logo remember that uh, it must represent your business your logo not someone else's the about us section again remember that these act as keywords for search engines so do get things in there mine's a bit basic at the moment uh, because I'm just in the process of setting this up and if we get chance later on during the Q&A session I'll actually show you it live and how I change it now location yeah United Kingdom website 
this is my social media academy website <coughs> excuse me so it's got their website verified now basically what that happens what happens is is that when you click when you go through this and you click that you want to verify your website and, and I'll show you how that works a, a little bit later on because there's a little button that says verify website and it's just the same as this one it, it and all you do is click on it and very much like Google what it'll do is it'll let you download a file and then you upload that to your server now if that's something that you can't do get your web designer or your web developer or your hosting company to do it for you and basically all that does what it what it it does do it does one of two things it verifies that the website does actually belong to you but the other thing is as well it also registers it with the search engines so if it's verified it's actually going into the search engines which gives you a, another uh, avenue in as well as your keywords so it is well worth doing it you can actually log in as well with social networks I log into my private one every now and again my personal one sorry with Facebook so for me that's why that's grayed out but I can actually log in with Twitter now what I do is I, I don't tend to do that I, I have set up a, a username and password um, separate to Twitter and Facebook and, and I just basically use that I, I just find it easier for me once you do get in uh, and, you, and you click uh, create account then what you're presented with is the verify your website button which you can do when we've gone through it also shows you how to start pinning and this installs a pinny bookmark um, so that you can start pinning images right from the right from the off right from the go gear uh, from the, from the uh, the moment you click go this is the button that I really well these two are the two that are, that, that really make it for me is uh, the add a pin it button and basically what add pin it does add pin it um, puts a, a, a pin it button on the bottom of your blog or the bottom of your website which is just superb because all people need to do then is just click that button and it pins it to their boards which is the vital side of, uh, of Pinterest which is exactly what we need and the add follow button is just a button that gives you the uh, code to put into your website or your blog and then people can just click on it and follow your account so once you get into this bit this is uh, th this really does uh, give you the uh, the tools to really start to push your website forward which is which is really what you do want you know you you, you want these buttons on there then people can start to share your content because that's the big thing about this is all the sharing of content now I am going to talk about Facebook, but I'm not going to talk about it in in any great detail. But what you can, what at the moment, what Pinterest doesn't allow you to do, or what Facebook doesn't allow you to do, is it doesn't allow you to add a tab, so that people can can actually join up um, on your Pinterest page within Facebook. But if you see that address there, woobox.com forward slash Pinterest, this actually puts an app onto your page and you can create a Pinterest tab I've got one on mine on my social media academy website but I wanted to show you it on this one because this is one of the high-end um, furniture uh, outlets in London and basically these guys do this really really well so write down even though we're recording this guys which is brilliant but write down uh, woobox.com forward slash Pinterest and that will add a, um, a button once it's been added then this is what it looks like within Facebook it actually adds what's termed as an iframe in, into uh, Facebook and the good thing about it is as well you've also got a follow me button in there so the good thing about Facebook is is that people are already signed up to you people are already following you so you don't have to work hard to get them to follow you on Pinterest as well because let's face it if if you're a business then then basically people are following you on Facebook because you are a business and they like the, the type of things that you do the type of things the information that you're giving them so the chances are is that they will follow you on, on follow you over onto Pinterest as well but the thing again from a design point of view the layout of it is just fantastic and I think Woobox do a really really good job with this so that's something as I say guys do do write that down 
If we get time at the end with the Q&A, I'll, I'll show you how I did it. So what I'm going to do now, guys, we will touch on Facebook a, a wee bit later on, but but not at the moment uh, because I, I really want to get digging into like the real heavy uh, content of Pinterest. So that basically what we can do, we can uh, we can really start to to make headway into uh, to what it is that. Uh, that it is that you want to sell. So my five strategies for power pinning, and because we're coming up to Christmas, and Christmas is basically the the sort of the big time for retail, and it doesn't matter if you've got a bricks and mortar shop or if it's an e-commerce shop. One of the big things for me is um, is actually getting your your message out there, and these are my five strategies uh, for getting your message out there. These are like I, I tend to call them my ninja my ninja top tip because within the social media academy and and I'll tell you a wee bit more about that right at the very end but within the social media academy th there is like a, a little ninja section where uh, every now and again I do share all these big these big top tips so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through five of them um, of the strategies for for uh, power pinning the first one is is infographics now infographics have really taken off probably over the last six to twelve months does anybody do me a favor guys just type into the into your chat box if any of any of you use um infographics or or if you you know if you don't know what they are if if you've uh, if you've never come across them before Yeah, I can see that. Yep, yeah, some some people. Have, ah, Michelle. Yeah, that's that's right. Well, what I'll do is in in a little while in a little while's time, I'll I'll show you how they're actually made. Well, an infographic basically is just um, it, it's an image breakdown of a process. So, like this one, it's like to buy a house. Four reasons to buy a house, and instead of it just being text. Or instead of it being a video or whatever, it's what actually happens is it's made into an image, so it's a lot more legible. But the good thing for Pinterest is is that not only are uh, portrait images probably the most clicked image within Pinterest, the different colours that you put in really do grab your eye really quite quickly. So. What we're finding is as well is a lot of businesses are starting to use infographics to get their message across. So this could be anything along the lines of how to buy a house, social media. Uh, now, some people say, why would you put a social media infographic up there? Well, just by virtue of, of what we're doing today, guys, the amount of people that want to know about social media, you know, these days that it's it's just like exploded and hence guys like me who, who, who hold webinars like this so we can see that there's a big need for it because you can see there if if you look along the bottom and I know that it's it's quite greyed out but it's got 101 likes three comments and 192 repins now 192 repins is just a fantastic uh, amount for something like this basically because this has been repinned 192 times so not only is 192 people saw it but it could be 192,000 192 million because basically what happens is very much like a retweet even though I think Twitter would just love to have statistics like this but just like a retweet this is what sends everything viral so basically what you've got to do is when you create an infographic is if you're creating it for a product, make it as as fun and as uh, and as visually exciting as you possibly can. I'll just click forward. Now, write this down again, guys, because this is another top tip. That's the website there, and it's basically www infogr am. So it's basically spelling infogram. What I'll do is I'll just click on it, and I'll and I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. 
So this is the login screen. So what I'll do is I'll just connect. I think I can connect with this one with Facebook. As you can see, it's got a, a nice big um, graphical layout, which is something again that I that I really like. So if we click login, let's just as long as it isn't slowing down, I'll just connect with Facebook just for this once, and then you can see how this works. And you can you, the 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 good thing about this is is that uh, with Infogram, you can there's templates, there's you can store stuff, you can do all sorts of different things so if you're new to infogram and if you haven't used it before then basically you can choose a template you just scroll along so if you wanted to use that template and you can see how easy it is so then all basically all you do is you just double click on everything and just type your title in whatever it is that you want to do if you want to use a chart think I'm clicking it too quick and you can see it, com it comes up like Excel so you can just you can select it put the information in that relates to your business to your service and it, it just to me I mean it's just a, a fantastic way of creating really really good uh, infograms and you can see there you can add a map I'll just I'll just minimize this a bit guys because it, just let me pull this down over the top and then you can see you can see what I can see so you can add a chart you can add a map you can put text into there you can add an image you can even put video into them which is just fantastic so if it is something that and, and I do recommend that you do it and I, and I tend to use these pretty much all the time just remember that it's it's infogr it's really infogram but it's infogr.am So you can see there that uh, infographics, they, they account for a lot of click-throughs, a lot of repins on, uh, on Pinterest. So remember that if you um, use an infographic, make it as visually exciting as you possibly can. Now the second tip is checklists. And checklists, are, they are one of the fastest growing images on Pinterest. And they're a great way to engage visitors. To me, you can add anything to a checklist. You can see on there, I know they're, they're a bit slim and a bit skinny, but a checklist can be anything. These are a moving checklist. Um, what you do before you move house, what you do before you uh, go on holiday. But you could do it for, for pretty much anything. It could be a checklist for um, a wedding. It could be a, a, a checklist for, uh, as I say, a moving house. It, it could be anything that your business relies on anything that uh, that your business provides as a service or as uh, as products so remember the checklists in in fact to me I, I I think you can make a checklist out of just about anything and again it's something that's that's repinned probably just as much if not more um, as what infographics are so really think about checklists guys does that make sense to you? Just give me a yes into the box if uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, and yeah, I know what you mean, Michelle. The, the print size is small, but in in fairness, what you can do once we're finished, then you can just skip back onto Pinterest, and uh, and and it is hard to read, but but uh, you can just skip back onto Pinterest and uh, and just and just search for them. Just search for uh, for checklist moving checklist holiday checklists Marie's asked do people have uh, do they print them to use them yes yeah they, they do uh, people do print them out and use them and that's basically what what it's for is just so that uh, you can use it as a checklist now the second thing the third thing is tip three and and I think this is probably one of the best ones uh, I wouldn't say it's the best I wouldn't say it's the best but it is definitely one of the best ones and this is tutorials and how to's now tutorials and how to's again a bit like infographics and and uh, checklists have really taken off probably this one in the last six months and and research is starting to show now that a lot of people a lot of businesses are starting to uh, brands are starting to put this up uh, and, and put tutorials and how to's up 
so you can see there how to tie a scarf, uh, how to tell if your cat is plotting to kill you. So some of them are quite fun, some of them are, are really quite serious. Some of them that I've seen on this one is uh, cardiac arrest, things like that. What to do in, in a you know in an emergency. So if if pretty much you're using a business. If you're a business that can put a how-to on there, again, like a, a photographer or, uh, or or if you like uh, bake cakes or, or whatever, then you can put a tutorial on there. And the other, th the other good thing that I really like about uh, tutorials is that it can demonstrate any of the products or any of the services that you've got. Again, it's just a matter of thinking creatively how you can use everything. And I think you've got to think about your customers on this one. And the reason I say that is, is always have it in the back of your mind that what would you, what would your customers want? So very much like me today doing this webinar, I I know that you guys want to learn as much about this as you possibly can. So obviously, you know, th that's what I'm doing. So what you've got to do is think about what your customers, what your clients want, and think about the uh, the tutorials and how tos you can put up there, and you can you can actually create these with uh, the same software that you that we use for uh, the infograms, uh, the infographics, uh, the infogram software. So you could use that in the same way, just use it for the same layout. That That's basically all it is. These are just images uh, created. Everybody got that, guys? Everybody happy with that? Anybody want to ask a question about the, the actual graphical side of it? You know, the, uh, sorry, I skipped forward there too quickly on the how-tos or the infographics. Just give me a big yes if you're uh, if you're all sort of happy with it. And where do you get the Emma's asked? Where do you get the info for the top tips layout? Uh, I'm not really sure which which one you mean, Emma. Sorry. Oh, just the graphics and so on. Well, b basically for these ones, what I tend to do is I, I do one of two things. Obviously, because you know. I, I am a, and, and was a designer. Basically, I, I'll just make these up in Photoshop. Not these particular ones. These aren't mine. But anything that I was going to do on social media, I would just make the graphics up. But there's lots of places you can you can go and purchase them, or you know, or you can get a Creative Commons license and use the images off uh, Flickr. But uh, there's, there's lots of, of of sites now where you can buy graphics like this, and that's probably what's happened on this one. On this one, to tie a scarf, the, the the companies probably use their own graphics. That's fine, Jane. Yep, no no probs. Uh, Emma, so you can put photos on there. Yep, you can put photos on there. You can put video on there. There's you can just about pretty much put anything on there. So you know you you can use it to your heart's content. It's just a matter of actually thinking about it. <coughs> Right guys, tip four, which is adding text to your images. Now, once you've got an image and once you you sort of, once you've got your images um, and these images, this one is fine. You know how most people will put something like this up and they'll say how to restore how to restore your dresser with our fantastic in instructions. We'll give you a step by step guide, and that looks really good. You know, I'm I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. But something that I've found probably over the past 6 to 12 months is that once you start to put text over the top of them and give it a, a bit more um, of a visual meaning and, and a bit more of an edge, then people will click on it. They'll, and they'll click on it a lot more than what they will if there isn't any text on it. Plus it gives you a chance to actually um, let people know what it is you do rather than just an image. Now... One of the things that um, that I noticed by just putting um, a wee bit of text over an image is that we actually seen when we were starting to do this for clients that we got a 42% uh, higher click-through rate, which was fantastic for us just by putting a wee bit of text on. And if you start to think about text in a more creative way, you know, the statement that you're going to put on there, then the click-through rate goes up again. So it's it, this is really something that's that's really worth doing. Now, I know there's a lot of people will say, 
and this is another top ninja tip guys so write this uh, email uh, email write this website address down and it's www.pickmonkey.com and so if unlike me if you're not a, a a designer if if you're not comfortable with Photoshop or or any of the other image manipulation programs out there this is just fantastic and we give this to some of our clients so that they can you know have a play with it and and, uh, and just create images from it put text on it now pick monkey and it it's just I don't know it's a bit like MailChimp I suppose it's really really simple to use and again I'll just give you a quick demo if we get a chance later on then what we'll do is we'll uh, I'll give you a quick tutorial on it. We'll just let it load in. Everybody still with me guys? Everybody okay? Just type a yes. I'm not going too quickly. Emma's loving it. Excellent Emma. Thank you very much. Right so, pick monkey. So I'll just do this really quite quickly. You can create a collage which we're not going to do and that's just, everyone knows what a collage is. Just lots of series of, uh, of images but on this one you just click to open and basically what you do is you just select an image and I'll just quickly select one off my pictures and we'll just we'll just take one so then you can see it opens up and you can crop it and you know and you can again you can just pull it in and out and, and pretty much do what you want with it and then click apply and there it goes you do get ads at the bottom but don't worry about that guys the good thing about this is you don't have to register with it w with this it's it's basically just a, a, a matter of, uh, of of drag and drop you can add text to it and you can decide which font you want to use this will run a wee bit slow just basically because I've got so much open but then once you've once you've decided on your font then just click add text and up it comes and you just type it into it into there so you just put and you can change the color you can pretty much you know everything that you would need is is basically there so that's pick monkey as i say what we'll do is we'll, we'll we'll go through it in a bit more depth later on if we get chance so remember that web address guys it's just pickmonkey.com and you you can do pretty much anything you want with your uh, with your images from there in Yeah, Jenny's Jenny's saying that she's uh, Jenny's saying that she's she's never heard of Pick Monkey, but she thinks it's fab, and it is. Once you've used it a few times, I mean, I I have to say I I do tend to use Photoshop a lot, but again, I, I do use Pick Monkey a lot as well. That one and uh, an Infogram are, are the two mainstays for me for uh, for Pinterest because you can pretty much do everything. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can pretty much do anything you want, uh, just with those three programs. So it it is it's just fantastic. So the last part of of adding text to your images and images to Pinterest is remember that you can add them straight in to Pinterest. You don't have to put them onto your website. You can just put them straight into Pinterest, and it's just a matter of clicking the little add button, and uh, and in you go. It's just it's. Uh, it's a great way of, of just using this site um, and, and pushing stuff in. Sorry, Marie. Do edits get saved to your own computer? You actually download them. It, it's in the same. It's in the same way. Basically, what you do is, is if I had clicked save, then it would have asked me where I wanted to save it on my computer. So basically, it does. Yes. Does that answer your question? Is that okay? Brill. Now, tip five is probably one of the ones that I, I, I 
really sort of was new to and this is one of the things where it actually is quite new this um you you're probably looking at, at no more than about i don't know maybe 6 months 4 months that video in big numbers has started being added to Pinterest and and basically all you do is you can add it through Vimeo you can add it through YouTube so if you have a YouTube channel then you can start to pin your videos uh, straight into uh, um, your Pinterest account which is just a, a fantastic thing as far as I'm concerned because the the big thing for me is especially with videos is that not only are they so visual which is a, an obvious statement to make but it's something that engages people really really quite quickly so if you've got a message you know and 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 it's not going to come across very well on infographics it's not going to come across very well on uh, on on images with text on them the two that that have gone before then video is a, is a fantastic way of doing it so if you do have a video channel or even if you don't i mean you can still just you know basically like you do with images just upload video straight into it and it will play it you know just exactly the same as what it will on your computer that is the good thing about this is that that video now is starting to be supported in so many ways um that it, it's it's really for me it's a no-brainer that the clients should use them especially if it's something that you use in your everyday business anyway you know if you're a wedding photographer or if you've got a a, a production company or you know then to me it is just a as i say it is just a bit of a no-brainer Right guys, so they're my five tips. They're basically my little five ninja tips. So for me, just type a quick yes if you've got a question before we move on. Is Was everybody happy with that? Was it something that you found interesting? Well, it seems that, that yeah, it seems that everybody found it useful, which is just just brilliant for me. Like I've said, guys, it it really makes it. Uh, yeah, that that's the that's the thing with it. Laura's put. Uh, she didn't think about pinning infograms. You can pretty much pin anything. Ah, now. Dal's asked a question, do you think it's more powerful than Facebook and should we concentrate on Pinterest more? What do you think? Now, I I tend to think that like any social media platform, use them in conjunction. And the reason I say this, the reason I say that it's uh, use them in conjunction is because if you've got people on uh, Facebook already, if you've got people that are following you already, like I said before, then it then it is a bit of a no-brainer. Basically, what you can do is use one to complement the other. So, the the other side of it as well, and and what I'll I'll just quickly skip back to one of my links. I'll just click on PicMonkey because it's easier to open my browser this way, and I'll show you all. On my Facebook page, I'll show you on my personal Facebook page. It's probably the easiest one to show you on. Is that on your Facebook page? You can see there. This is the event. Uh, this is the webinar event that we're on today. But one of the the good things about this is that once this loads in, and and tell me if you can see, guys. So you've got events there as well, which is a, an, another good thing. There we go. So you can see there. You are, basically what you do is you just bring everything off your Pinterest board into Facebook, and with uh, Woobox, you can. It's now it's vice versa. So to answer your question, Dal, what I would say is, is use both. Look for ways to. Uh, for one to complement the other if you like and that's basically what I try to do that it's a lot of this that when I do a lot of my testing it's it's that's the reason so that basically I can come and tell you guys you know do this do that do the other and it and it helps you get a sort of perspective on it so I would say use both now 
because social media is you know my business what I would say is that probably start off with two if you've got a, a fairly strong um, presence on Facebook and and by fairly strong I mean if you've got like two or three hundred people who follow you on Facebook uh, either you or your business then Facebook would be the one that I would say go with because I think Pinterest and Facebook and probably Pinterest and Twitter lend each other um, each other really really well I, I think that they both play to each other's strengths and I think they do complement each other really well because they are quite visual Google Plus is another one that I tend to uh, that I tend to use as well. So I hope that answers you your question, Dal. Just pretty much just use both. That's that's what I would say. We'll just skip forward, guys. So one of the big things for me, and and I think what it pretty much what it should be for you too, is um, use your own content, your own original content. Like we said with the, uh, like we said w with the infographics and everything else that's that's uh, gone with it, and the how tos, original content is something that Pinterest loves. Even though that that you can uh, you can repin other things, and I suggest you do because very much like Facebook and Twitter, it's that constant sort of uh, I don't know. <laughs> complementing each other I mean I have quite a few followers on Pinterest and I pin some of their stuff they pin some of my stuff and it works quite well so I think it is worthwhile uh, pin an original content now what if you haven't got anything to pin what if you're just setting off and you haven't got any images you haven't got you know anything that you could put up there I started by putting my blog posts up there so basically what I would do what what I would do was was put an image into my blog post and then link the image to Pinterest and then it would link back and I'll show you how to do that as we go through the slides how how to link uh, images back to your blog or to your website the other thing that you can do if you've got opt-in pages opt-in pages are, are, if you use if you're an internet marketer if if you sell things online then opt-in pages are another great way to use Pinterest because you can push people back to them if you've got product pages so some of our clients have uh, e-commerce websites and basically what we do we we set up boards for them uh, that link back to the e-commerce site and we find that the click-through rate for the e-commerce site really starts to push up it really starts to uh, it really starts to to get a buzz factor about it and especially this time of year with Christmas coming up the other thing as well is, is just as we've talked about your YouTube channel because now you can put video into it which is just brilliant uh, and the other thing is as well is listings so listings could be if you're uh, if you sell if you're an estate agent if you're a newspaper publisher any listings that you've got that you push out to people either um, be it houses newspapers whatever you can link through Pinterest back to your site so think about your own content guys w one of the the strategic things for me when I do go through it with clients is what content have they got that we can use to put onto Pinterest and that's the basically the way that you should look at it what content can you use any content that you can put on there uh, the people will click to go back to your website blog post is, was probably my best one I have to say and it's now starting to be closely followed by my YouTube channel uh, just because I'm doing more videos and a lot of the webinars that I do I tend to put on YouTube even though the, again they do tend to be uh, they, they do tend to be restricted but you know that, that it's just think about it that's the big thing for me so if you want what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a quick little you a quick little tutorial on how to edit an image and how to add a link to it is everybody still with me guys I, I keep I should keep asking you if you're all okay and if if you're taking all this in I'm I'm not going too quickly anything you want to ask brilliant looks like everyone's enjoying it so that's that's exactly what we need so when you get to your pin boards 
Uh, Michelle would like to know more about the Pinterest money side. Yes, the, the, that's a, a, a great uh, question. Do they take money from your website? Well, basically what I tend to do for, and, and, it, and it is a good question, and, and this, this probably this next bit will highlight it, because what I tend to do uh, is if I, if I put a link back to my website, it's for one of two reasons, and, and basically this is really what social media is all about. There, there's only really two reasons to use social media. The first one is to make money, and if that's what you want to do, fantastic. The second one is, is brand awareness, to push your brand. And most times what you, what you tend to find is that most people go for brand awareness first, because if you've got brand awareness first, then the money will follow. And the reason I say that is, is because if you go onto a social uh, networking platform or a social media platform, and the first thing you do is tell people, um, we sell this, that and the other, it tends to be a bit of a switch off. Because very much like any type of networking, you've got to build up that, that trust. People have got to uh, actually trust you before they'll buy anything off you. And that's the main thing. So for me, yes, I do take money. Uh, and I do make money off uh, social media sites. But my first and probably the key component for me is for brand awareness. Is so that people will keep coming back. Because you don't just want to sell them something once. It's like I put in, in one of my emails to, to another list. Pinterest isn't just for Christmas. You want to be using it you know, well after Christmas. So it's that trust and that brand awareness that you want to build up first. Does that make sense? Just type a yes in, guys, if, if it makes sense to you. So what I'll do, guys, now I'll, I'll take you through how to uh, actually link one of your images back to your website. So pretty much what you do is you just click on one of your images, and this is one of my personal ones. This is one of my art sites, um, which will become apparent as we go through. So what you do is, once you've clicked on your image, you go through to the to the gallery, and then you'll when you hover over the image, you'll see that it, it comes up with edit, and then you click on that little edit button. Then you come through to edit the pin, so you can again think about it. Even though I haven't highlighted it, because this is all about sort of you know um, linking through to your website. But remember in the description a few keywords if it helps, because everything helps on Pinterest. So remember that. Even into the little description box, just put a, a couple of keywords, and that's what shows up under here as well. So not only does it have to um, illustrate what the painting is, or, or what the product is, or what the service is, it also has to sort of rank as well. So think about it that way. So what you would do is, you would just cut and paste whatever link it is, that whatever URL it is, or link back to your website, would go into there, and then you just click Save Pin. Now, one of the things, I'll tell you what I will do, and I'll just see if I can bring up a browser, and then you can see it actually, you can see it work. Uh, just let me go back to a link, because it's easier than doing. And if I can log in on my personal one, I'll, I'll show you how it works. coming on my social one so what I'll quickly do is I'll I'll just log out because I haven't got any of these linked Right, Michelle, it was suggested not to do this as I have affiliate, affiliate links on my website website, and somehow Pinterest ops on this link and earns money. Not sure if this is true. I, I, I wouldn't say that has been a problem because when you sign up for affiliate links on your website, and, and some of the websites I have, uh, I have affiliate links on them too. I, I have some on my, social, uh, on my Social Media Academy website, and 
No, I, I wouldn't see it really as, as any sort of big problem. I, I think the only time that it would be a problem is if if they were being spammed, and then I think they would just get in touch with you anyway. Right, so guys, let me see. So you can see my personal one here. This is this is the the, the sort of the big thing for me. This is my art one. So if uh, there's my art one. So this is the image that I that I did the uh, I did the slides on. So if I just click edit, you can see that's basically the the, the slide. So if I click on this one, then it should take us back to my social uh, artist website. Because for some of you, you, you probably don't even know, and I, and I apologise for not saying it right at the very top, guys, is that uh, I, I'm also, um, would you believe, a professional artist, and and I do paint under the, the, the sort of the handle of the social artist. And so I do, I do lots of different things, and I've, I've been an artist for a long, long time. And this is where I, I do tend to sell m most of the stuff. So, to answer the question before, you've got to sign in to see this. Let, let me have a look. Uh, I'll just skip forward, guys. Get back to where we were. So you can. One of the things as well about using your own original content. I I know you can't see that there, but you can see there. And again, this is other platforms will kill to have this sort of uh, engagement. One thousand eight hundred and sixty likes, forty-seven comments, eight thousand seven hundred and twenty-three repins. And this is all original Christmas content. Now, I'm not saying you know. I mean, obviously, we're we're getting to the the sort of the business end of the year for retail and anybody who's uh, who's selling anything online. But you can when people say to me. Um, I'm selling my stuff on Facebook on the on the Facebook uh, like e-commerce site. I just think, why? Why would you do that? I mean, because for this, I mean, this is yes, you can sell it on eBay, and and yes, I do flirt with eBay every now and again. But this is free. There's no charges to make. It's just it, to me again, guys. It's just a it's just a bit of a no-brainer when you see this type of engagement. 10,710 repins. I mean, it's just fantastic. So think about it if, if you do have a retail business. The other thing that I really wanted to touch on was the gift side of it. Because the, the gift boards are, are just fantastic. And what I will do, guys, I'll just see if I can show you a, a gift board. Right, so if you click on on Pinterest, just on the on the main logo, you can see there gift boards, and this is just brilliant because you can see there that you can get gifts for between one and twenty, fifty and a hundred, and it brings them up. So if you are selling stuff over the Christmas period or even past the Christmas period, this is where you need to be. You need to be on on the gifts section. Uh, and and basically, the the way to get onto the gift section is just to add a price to your uh, to your image, and and that's probably the the best way. Or in your keywords, put things like gifts for wives, gifts for Christmas, gifts for men, gifts for children. That it it's really so simple. It's just a matter of uh, of getting your keywords right and putting a price in there, guys. Does that make sense o on the gift side of it? Just type me a yes, or or if there's a question that you want to ask on gifts. <laughs> Emma's put two right. I'm doing that tonight. F fantastic guys. I mean, it's it's really really simple to do this. It's it's really simple, and if we click on one, I think the other thing as well to remember is that the engagement on on when you put prices in there is just incredible. How how it pushes up. I mean, a lot of the stuff as well. 
the, the, these are, and we're going to touch on it in the next section, but these little call to actions are just, just fantastic. So you can see there, £79, it's just, you know, brilliant. And you can use these uh, for, for pretty much anything, anything at all. See if it loads in straight through to the uh, to the website where you can buy it, which is just you know exactly the same as what we had. So then you just had to bag. Couldn't be better. So you can see the engagement side of it. You can see how it, uh, how unlike things like um, eBay, where you have to pay charges and everything else, all this is just free and it's worldwide, which is just you know incredible so the the gift side of it just before we move on and and it might be worth just asking this question does everybody know how to put a price in there so that you know so that it, it does come up like that quite a few know there uh, yes yes so you use it for eBay Brill is Brill yeah think so well pretty much all it is is if we go to boards uh, right if I I'll do it with one, of my, with one of my pieces of work again if we just oh, if we click on edit all you've got to do is just put a pound sign in there and if I put 120 quid you can see it comes up 120 pound and that's as easy as it is all you all you have to do is so if you're selling in pounds it's a pound sign if you're selling in dollars for some of the guys that that, that I know for it for that are on the the webinar from America and from Australia uh, this is this is basically all you do it's just a pound sign how simple is that fantastic isn't it and then you just click save pin So then, so then all you would do, you just link it through to your site. And once you link it through to your site, like the last example, you just link it through to that URL. So if, if we skip back, I know I'm missing out the slides here, you guys, but sometimes it's better just to actually see actually see it live. Do you agree? Is it, would you rather see it live like this and, and me sort of show you what it's like? Yeah, brill. So what you would do is, pretty much all you would do is if you, it's got a price of $59. So then you click on it. And basically all they've done is that URL there, they've put into that link that I showed you before on the image side of it. That's all they've done. They've just cut and pasted it, just copy. And if I use one of mine again all I would do is just replace that and just delete it and then paste and then it would go and that will be the link and that's just it's just so much easier So, how many are you going to be using that in the future? It's just, it's just fantastic, guys, isn't it? It's just, you, you can't really sort of understand how easy all this is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see, definitely. So, use the gift board, definitely, guys. If you've got, if you've got stuff to sell, use the gift boards, without a doubt. Right. The next section is all about CTAs. Now you'll know what CTAs. I, I don't even have to ask you this, guys. It was going to be a little question. Does everybody know what CTA stands for? And I, and I, well, does everybody know what CTA stands for? Even though I told you about five minutes ago, just type it in if you know what it is. It's surprising how many people don't know what this is. Yeah. Well done, Michelle. That's the one. Yep. Yeah. Well done, Pete. Well done, Mike. Yep. Yeah, without a doubt. 
Superb. Well, CTA is call to action. That's the one, Andrea. Yep. It's call to action. And and basically what call to action means is that you've got a reason to click it or it gives you a reason to click it. So a call to action on this one is the price. That would be the call to action. But I have to say where these guys have missed a bit of a trick is they could have put something in there, you know, like click this for a special deal or uh, repin this. Think about the things that you can use. So, you know, something like in, in these little boxes, in your little description boxes, put please repin, like please retweet. Uh, and people do. People will re repin it and uh, click here for more information. The other thing as well is, is remember guys, it's keywords. That's the that's the main thing, is, is the keyword side of it. Remember to get them in there. Prices as well. If you put a price in there, which we've seen is so easy to do, that's a, that is a good one. That Michelle's just, just typed in. The best one I've seen is pin now, read later. Fantastic, without a doubt. That is, that is a good one to use, Michelle. But prices, stats have shown that 30% uh, thirty six percent of uh, images that have got prices on them get thirty percent uh thirty six percent more likes so it's worth doing it if you're selling things without a doubt guys remember to put the, those prices in there and the other thing is is links they're big call to actions like we've seen before that you can just um put a link on there take it right through to your uh, to your website to your e commerce site to your blog to whatever it is that you're selling, uh, whatever it is that you're giving away. So it, it could be ebooks, it could be videos, it could be physical things, you know, that you sell that you would normally sell on eBay. And that might be something to think about because we've had a couple of clients that have taken some of their products off eBay and tried them and, and trialed them on Pinterest and it's actually worked better on Pinterest. Fashion is a is a big thing on Pinterest. Uh, as you can see, I mean if you just click the the normal sort of uh, Pinterest oh, if you click the normal sort of uh, Pinterest button at the top then you'll see fashion is such a big thing so so anybody who's in the fashion in the fashion business without a doubt one of the things that we did found that we did find sorry and we've and we and it was I'm I'm trying to say that it uh, was by design, but I have to say, guys, it wasn't. It was basically just by accident that we put a call to action button on an image, and this is another another one of my ninja top alerts. And if you put something like that on, get access now. Click here. The normal call to action uh, buttons that you see on a, on a lot of sites. We found that we got a, an 80% increase in engagement. Lizard asked the question, is this only available on business boards? It is. And and uh, and yes, I, I would use it as a business because if you're selling things uh, as personal, then obviously, you, you know, especially in the UK, you're going to run into a, a few problems. So I would really only use it on, on business boards, Liz, definitely. Uh, what about art? Yes, you could sell art through it. I mean, I, I, I sell mine through, even though I'll give you a bad example. Uh, I sell my art through it, definitely. I just just have to work out a better way of actually selling it so, so people can get on there to buy it. But yes, I mean, with, without a doubt. I, I think you could pretty much sell anything on this, and people do. But when you think that you get a, an 80% increase in engagement just for putting on something like Get, get Access Now or Click Here whatever I, I just why wouldn't you and the, the other thing as well is you can do that with uh, pick monkey you can you can just you know type on the image click for more information whatever uh, right yeah that's probably what it is it probably what it is then at least if, if you're doing it on a yeah, if you're doing it on a personal account well you could do what we what I suggested right at the very start you could either uh, convert your personal account or you can just create another account uh, like I did from a social media uh, academy 
I think probably that would be the best way to go and keep the personal and the business separate. But again, guys, like I said right at the very top, that's that's totally up to you. One of the big things, and I'm going to go through this quite quickly, is uh, the search engine optimization. Yeah, I, th I think that's right, Liz. Just just open another one. Just before I get onto the search engine side of it, guys, any questions you want to ask me? Is everybody up to speed? Everybody happy with what we've covered so far? Now, the SEO side of it, the search engine optimization side of it, I'd, I've tried to keep this as um, as simple as I possibly can, and, and I'm using this with Google Analytics, and I'm just going to show you a few slides. So I, I'm, I'm not going to do anything too technical I'm just basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how it tracks visitors and, and things like that and how you can use it so if if it does start to get too technical guys if if I start to ramble on just fire me a quick question just fun you know just fire it in you know it's too technical or whatever just let me know so one of the big things about Google Analytics is that you can track visitors and, and that's no different with uh, Pinterest because you can actually put Pinterest into this. Does it, I should have asked this before guys and I apologize. Does anyone, has anyone used Google Analytics before? Do they use it on their sites? Just give me a yes or, or whatever guys and then I'll know how many people have, that we've got. Yeah, basic knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Reno, yeah. Ah, Sarah, yep. Just starting to use Google. Well, I won't give you much advice in this, Sarah, unfortunately, but I will actually, I will go through it. Uh, but pretty much when you log into Google Analytics, what it's doing is it's, it's tracking all the pages on your website, or it should be if you've got it set up correctly, and it gives you a, 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 an insight. It used to be a basic insight, but it's getting better and better it gives you an insight into who's looking at the site and when and things like that so what you can do with with, uh, with Pinterest is is you can set up goals now some people find goals really easy to set up others find them a wee bit more difficult uh, one of the things that I do do inside of the Academy is I, I, I have a training video on, on how to set goals up because people can find it really quite difficult once you've done it then it, you you just realise a, a bit like Adam Price's two images, just how simple this this can be. So don't worry if this sounds technical, guys. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's surprising how it becomes clear. So basically, what you would do is you would go to traffic sources with inside your uh, inside your analytics, and you would look at referrals. Now, the what you'll find is is that Pinterest probably won't be there because you won't have set up a goal. But what you can do, once you've set up a goal, you can type uh, a filter and you can type Pinterest into there and then just click the search button and it'll come up and tell you how many visits you've had from Pinterest to your website. So then you start, you can build up a picture of how many people are actually coming from Pinterest by clicking your images or your links back to your website so you get you're starting to get a full picture and the nice thing about this is obviously Google Analytics is free yes you've got to put a wee bit of time in to get up to speed but it is free so just on this slide um, you can see that it's just traffic sources referrals and then Pinterest if it isn't on there type it in and see if something comes up you'll probably find that nothing will come up until you set up a goal now one of the things about setting up a goal is that you can find out if if you've got an e-commerce site probably the easiest way to explain a goal is that say you've got an e-commerce site and you want to find out why people are getting through to the checkout and then and then bailing out and that used to be one of the big problems that Amazon had and really that eBay had uh, and eBay is probably a better example because they ended up doing something about it because what people were doing is when people were, were going through the buying process on eBay they were getting to the end and then if you were an early adopter like I was when, when eBay first started, when you clicked on buy now, you went to a, a, a different site, another window opened up, and it looked totally different to eBay, and you thought, whoa, what's going on here? Am I on the right site? So, to cut a long story short, basically what eBay did was, eBay bought PayPal and integrated it into um, eBay. 
So now even though PayPal is still a standalone uh, solution and I use it continually uh, to sell a lot of my products, it is actually owned by eBay and it's integrated into eBay. Anybody who uses eBay will say now that it's all just seamless like Amazon is. So basically what, what a goal would do, looking at the eBay scenario, you would set up a goal so that when you got to the checkout page, it would say how many people have clicked through and how many people have bailed out. And it would tell you that, it would give you that information. So if you looked at it, and we're using the, the Pinterest example. So if that was how many people continued from Pinterest, then it would be 857. How many people, uh, for want of a better term, bailed out? 101. So you would see that basically you've got to do something about it. On this one, what this represents is how many people have come from Pinterest direct, straight from Pinterest, and how many people have looked at it on the mobile version of Pinterest. Now you can see that pretty much at 857, Pinterest.com still going to hold a bit of swear. But one of the things that I con continually say to people and will continually say to people is think about mobile as well because you can guarantee that in a month's time, if we did this again, that would have gone up to probably 201, maybe even 250 because with the advent of um, tablets, the bigger phones like the Nexus 4 and, and everything else, people are, are starting to use mobiles to engage with these types of sites, Pinterest, Facebook, eBay, all the engagement sites a lot more than, what com than what's ever been done. So if you do sell items, if you do sell products, whatever, think about the mobile side of it as well, because that little slide there does actually give you a lot of information that are, that are uh, out of probably just short of a thousand, 101 people are actually looking at it on a mobile. Does that make sense, guys? Just give me a yes if it does. Brill. Seems that everyone's getting it. Excellent, excellent. Now, the conversion rate one, this pretty much tells you how many times Pinterest has, has assisted in a conversion. So, taking the e-commerce scenario again, if, if you look at that one, it's an assisted conversion. So, the medium that it's come through is Pinterest. So, you can see there that they've had four referrals from the Pinterest website and they've actually spent £212, $212, sorry. The last interaction conversion value was 286 So, you can see there that it's gone down. Last interaction conversions. They had nine conversions. On this one, they had four. So, instantly that would tell you that there's, the, the, there's something wrong on the site. And again, it's a, it's a fantastic little slide to illustrate that maybe the description isn't good enough. Maybe there isn't enough keywords in there. Maybe the description doesn't tell people exactly what they want to know to make them purchase it, to assist them with purchasing it. So, you can see there that just through setting up your Google Analytics really well, you know, with goals and everything else and the assisted conversions, you can start to track what's coming through Pinterest, which I think if you're selling things, you know, you, you need to know. You, you need to know how much, how much you're actually selling on that day or that month. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Spot on, guys. Spot on. And this is one of the, this is an interesting little slide, because basically what this tells you this tells you the where it's come from as a referral from Pinterest. So it's Pinterest.com referral. So that's come through the search engine Ask, and it's 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 termed as organic, and that means that someone's typed it in. They might have typed in your your product, and it's actually come up with Pinterest first. So they might have typed in. Uh, green i don't know cashmere jumper and if you've got a green cashmere jumper on pinterest there's a good chance because your description and your keywords and everything else and your sites uh verified that it comes up on pinterest in, maybe before your e-commerce site or maybe even before your ebay site so that's saying that it's come through the ask search engine and it was an organic typing it was an organic uh request same again that's come direct from pinterest that's why it's got direct and non. And again, Pinterest referral, Google, same reason. 
someone's typed it into Google and Pinterest come up first. So it shows you the power that uh, Pinterest and Google have. That's why I think it's worth um, going through, even in a high level sort of detail, and I know it is, it is a high level sort of detail, uh, that SEO is really important and that it's something that you should, that you owe to yourselves to look at because if you start off with a flourish of sales, so, so say after this webinar everyone hopefully is fired up and they think right what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of my products some of the services that we do on Pinterest let people know exactly what it is that we do you've got a link through to your site you've got a price on there whatever and from now till Christmas everything goes really well you make lots of sales fantastic and then after Christmas I know we do get a lull but after Christmas it goes quiet Looking at this sort of information on Google Analytics is really critical to find out why it's gone quiet. Now, it could be a genetic quietness because everyone's paying the credit cards off after Christmas and nobody's buying anything. Or it could be that maybe your descriptions have changed or maybe your prices are a bit too high or they might be a bit too low. But the, the good thing about using Pinterest and Google Analytics in conjunction, a bit like Pinterest and Facebook, is that you get an overall picture of what's happening. Does that make sense, guys? Just type me a yes if it does. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, just over an hour and a half we've been at this, guys, and, and it's just it's flown in. I, these webinars always really, really sort of amaze me on on how quickly that you think it's going to be two hours of you know just like mayhem and usually on my webinars I have to say that it, it genuinely is but I like it that way and, and I think it proves it because people keep coming back which is fantastic but it, we've spent quite a bit of time talking about Pinterest so what I want to do is I just want to take a, a, a quick step back <laughs> yeah Lisa said you're not kidding but I think one of the things is is that when you're on a webinar like this, and I don't know about you, but I know when I go on these webinars, I want as much information as I possibly can get in the not in the shortest possible time. But you you want to you want to leave these webinars, or I, I certainly want you to leave one of my webinars thinking that fantastic, we've learned a lot today, you know, and I hope you've made lots and lots of notes, even though this will be recorded and you can go back and and listen to it any time you want. But that you've got something out of it, that it's been, you know, two hours worth spending together, uh, asking questions and finding out all this fantastic information. And and that's really what I like to get out of a, a, a webinar when I join them. So that's what I try to give you guys, as, as much value and, and quality info as I certainly can. Ah, thanks, Michelle. That's nice. So a quick re recap, guys. So we've gone through... How to add a pinny button to your site. Now, one thing that we didn't do, uh, and I'll show you how to do it now. This is how to, to add a, a pinny button because what I didn't do with this is I flicked across the slide when I was trying to get to the image, uh, trying to get to the, the URL link and didn't go back. So, you can see, or you should be able to see, a little pinny button at the top of there. Yep. Now, basically what you do is, to get on there, ah, thanks Dal, brilliant, is click help, and then click goodies. And this is a great section, this. And, and I advise you when, you, when you do sign up for, uh, for Pinterest, is to go through the goodies side of it and, and have a look. Now, there's a little video here that shows you it, 55 seconds long, but I'll show you quicker than that, is when you hover over it, you'll see that it changes to a, your cursor changes to a four-pointed star. Left click, and you just literally drag it. Now, I'm, I use uh, Chrome, and you can see I've got two pinny buttons now. I use the Chrome browser, but you can do this with Internet Explorer. You can do it with uh, Firefox, Safari, all, all the main browsers, and then pretty much all you do and I shall show you with my uh, da, 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 da. 
I'll close that one down and I'll show you with my YouTube how easy it is to pin something. So we'll just let's have a look. Do, 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 do. We'll just pick a random video. Some of these YouTube channels are getting really good now. The the backgrounds to them, the the graphics to them are just incredible. Click the pin it button. No, certainly not letting us see, guys. Try it with that button. I wonder if, if because I've got two buttons, I wouldn't have thought so. No, that's a shame. But basically, all you do is you just whatever image is on there, you can just click pin it. And you can see there, that's just my profile image. Uh, it's not like in YouTube. But the the pinny button is just fantastic. It It's really, really, really good, guys. So we've done install a Pinterest tab onto your Facebook page. And we did that through Woobox. And again, I hope you've written all that down, guys, because that, that is a fantastic system. Remember that you've got to create your own original content and then actually link through to it. And that's the big thing, is linking through to it. That's, uh, that, that's probably one of the big things for me, is the original content. And it's got to be quality content. That's the other thing. Just make sure that it is quality. And you use videos, infographics, tutorials and how-tos, especially if you've got lots to sell or if you've got lots of products that you want to sell or you've got lots of uh, information that you want to give away infographics and tutorials are a great way to do that and remember to use your call to actions your keywords your prices and most importantly your links back through they're the most important things without a doubt so we've covered a, a, a great lot today guys I mean basically nearly two hours when you think we've been here nearly two hours it's just fantastic Everyone had a really good time. Is, is there any questions that you want to ask me just before we move on? Uh, Sarah, yeah, you can. You can just just go back through it, uh, and and then you can see what's you know what you've done and how and what I did and how I did it. And it's only a, it's only a two minute thing. I mean that's that's the the good thing about this. So I suppose now, guys. I mean, the, I suppose the big thing now is is you know what what you decide to do. And and to me, I mean, I I think now that we've we've basically just got, you know, your choice, and I think the first choice is: do you spend lots of your valuable time and energy figuring out how to use this and other platforms? Because it, it's surprising how many people look at it and think, oh, we've had a, a two-hour webinar and it's been absolutely brilliant," but there's still lots and lots of things, lots of strategies that are out there that you know you spend lots and lots of times trying to figure out and that's I mean basically that's what I did I mean it, it's it's taken me phew, best part of what two years to get my head around this and, and do all this sort of thing so I think that the choice is either that or you, or you can you know take a shortcut and you can come with me and I'll show you all the proven strategies that I've learned over the past like 12 18 months and basically what this does this will just give you better results and it'll just be quicker and easier and and that's the thing it's just the speed of it all and and getting up to uh up to speed with everything that's out there i mean cuz i mean for me to learn all of this sort of stuff and and i thoroughly enjoy it i mean my my mission after sort of you know learning it and putting it all into practice uh having the strategies make money for me uh, make money for some of our clients i mean the the big thing for me is to help you guys as quickly and as easily get more customers and get more exposure because that's basically what it's all about it's all about the exposure side of it and getting more customers as we said right at the very top is that uh, you know without customers you're not selling anything and that's the big thing you know is is attracting people so for me i mean i, I 
think it's something that you need to get started on today. I, I don't think it's something that you can you can wait for, because really what you're looking for is the clients and the customers that you deserve to get, rather than just sort of think right we've had this webinar, it's been fantastic. We're just sort of you know we're we're on our way, and then it all starts to fizzle out. And I know what it's like because I, I've done it myself. I've been I've sat where you guys have sat and been really inspired. Once the webinar's finished, I've looked at the recording a couple of times. That's been pretty much it. And then people come back and say, oh, well, we didn't make any money out of it. We, you know, we've, we've still got 25 clients. We've still got 25 likes on, on Facebook. So what I want to do, guys, is I want to give you the opportunity to join me with inside uh, the Social Media Academy. Inside the Academy, once you've registered, it isn't all just about Pinterest. It's about lots and lots of different things Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn. I mean, I'll, I'll just give you time to absorb what the access all areas is. There's so much to it, and there's and there's so many things going in going on in there that uh, really it's a no-brainer because the webinar really is just the precursor to what it is that you need to learn to push you to the next step. And the good thing I I, I suppose for me with the academy is you've seen the people that are in there that have really come on strides that are really out there now making a difference and the business is making a difference and that's the big thing for me is the the teaching like like we've done you know like we've done today i mean uh, there's other webinars in there there's webinars that are coming up that i'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks time some of the webinars that I do were paid for but everyone who's in in the academy like some of the guys who are in the academy who are on the the uh webinar today they'll tell you you know basically nobody pays for anything for the webinar once you've signed up there's lots and lots of training in there and it's not as i said just about uh, pinterest it's basically about blogging how you can use your blog to really make money um, to gather information to gather clients to gather customers and that's the big thing i mean and, and in the new year i've got two really big exciting projects starting which you guys will get not only will you get um, first sort of knowledge on but you'll also get a discount on and that's the big thing I mean the 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 big one for me is that one writing your blog to get results because the amount of people that write blogs and don't get any results off it is just it's such a shame because there's so much effort goes into it the other one is social media marketing for success and this is a 16 week intensive course and basically what I'm going to take you through is how to set up campaigns, how to run webinars like I do if that's what you want to do on your chosen subject, all that will be in there, that's the, the, the thing that's starting in the new year, that's the, uh, that's the, the, the two big training uh, sessions. In there I also have uh, training videos and, and I think at the last count there's about 20 where uh, people can go in and it's a 24 7 access you can just keep going in there learning the videos uh, watching the videos the average length of the videos is 90 minutes um, so you can see how much information there is in there it's a it's a bit like it is today you know I'll just cover everything in as much detail as possible so that everybody gets it like I said the webinars are in there guys I've, I've just done one on social media marketing and mixed messages that's now come off the public domain and it's now just with inside my what you've heard me call my ninja marketing and this all builds up into a, a campaign and a strategy that you can use at any particular time and I think the other good thing about it is as well is that I'm there pretty much all the time like I am today so one of the big things for me uh, that I like to do is to make sure that you guys are happy now speaking to other people who do this and looking at what other people charge, they charge like 297 quid for this sort of thing just to get into it and that isn't for me, I mean I, I just think that's far too much. At the moment it's on there at 197 uh, pounds, that's what it costs to actually get in there and it's, I don't even pretty much want to start charging that in fairness guys, I mean it, because I just think you know you've been on the webinar today it's been something that you've uh, that you've looked at it's been something that you've you've been through with me so what I am going to do um, so that you can join me on the Academy is there's just going to be payment 
of 97 quid and everything that's with inside the social media academy will be yours for 97 quid and and basically what will happen is you'll join me in inside the academy you'll learn everything that that I have in there there'll be uh, videos there'll be all sorts of different things webinars there's a forum in there where we all get together and we all speak to one another and we can ask each other questions and do everything that that you know that we would normally do that we that I would normally do outside but the thing I have to say is as well a lot of the stuff that I do do in the uh, academy is I don't I answer the questions that I don't answer anywhere else w one of the things that I, I sort of I'm not too keen on is not so much giving away the information because that that isn't what it's about for me for me it's given as much information as I possibly can for me it's uh, it's making sure that you guys are well cared for that everything within with inside the social media academy is there for you so that anytime you want to come back anytime you want to do anything anytime you you know you know you you want to speak to me it's like I'm there and that's one of the big things that I do uh, continually is I make myself available and I always try to do that so a lot of people think who's the training for you know is the training going to be applicable to me if I if I pay the 97 quid is the is the training going to be for me and basically if you're running a blog if you're you know if if you're looking for to make money out of a, out of running a blog or if you just want more brand awareness from running a blog then definitely the trainings for you estate agents and I know there's a couple on the webinar today that's definitely because it's estate agents are so visual it's like and, and I know Sarah who's, who's on the uh, on the webinar today who's attached to a, um, a, a TV company I mean again it's just to me it's just a no-brainer service providers it helps build trust with your audience and show the value of the services, product-based businesses. They should all be on. That's you know, it, everybody should be on Pinterest. Everybody should be using the strategies that I've sort of took like four or five years to build up. Um, and and you guys can just sort of you know come in and and help me with that, and and sort of get the access to it. Direct sales or network marketers, authors, coaches, and speakers. Anybody who does anything on the web or off the web will gain from actually being in the uh, in the academy with me. So what I want to do, guys, is I just want to give you this give you five minutes to just skip on all the. You can see the bottom, right? Because this, what I have to tell you is, even though people are going to get the recordings, and I want them to get the recordings, the ones who have had to skip off. Probably by the time they see this, this will have finished. It'll it'll have gone back to its normal price. Now I'm not just saying that, you know, just to to get you over there to to sign up and and uh, and spend the ninety seven pounds. Basically, what I want to do is I want to give you this opportunity because it probably won't. Well, it definitely won't come again this year. I mean, the the money that you spend uh, today will give you access into the academy, and that's all the blogs, the webinars. The training videos, the access to me, which I think is is probably the big one, is is the access to me because I, I generally don't give it that often, and and probably not that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you five minutes to skip on over, and just register before we get through to the uh, to the question and answers, which is going to be the last bit. So as I say, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you five minutes, ten minutes, however long it, it takes you guys to get across there. And just uh, and just sign up for it, Sarah. Is there a way of signing up later? Yes. What I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to leave the, uh, the the webinar price on for the people who are on there, and it'll probably stay on till tomorrow. So anybody who hasn't signed up today, then you will get a chance. But but I have to say it is going to go really quite quickly. So anybody who who and I'm not doing this just to to sort of push it along, but obviously. If you miss it, then it goes back up to to 170, 197. Um, so yes, the 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 basic answer, Sarah, is yes, you can sign up later, and I'll leave it on. I'll I'll leave it on for a little while longer. 
brilliant guys it's nice to see that so many of you have signed up off the uh, off the webinar it's it's just fantastic brilliant so what I'm going to do guys for the ones that, that sign up today I'm going to give you a no brainer 14 day money back guarantee so if within that 14 days there isn't anything that's you know took your fancy or or you don't like what I've done whatever then for 14 days you'll uh, I'll give you a, 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 a no quibble no questions asked money back guarantee and that lasts for 14 days but I have to say that once it goes back up to its regular price then there isn't a money back guarantee it's only f only for the guys that are on this webinar this won't even carry over to the recording so I have to say if you are watching the recording then this doesn't apply to you guys I'm really really sorry if you are watching the recording at a later date uh, this is just for the guys who were who were on the uh, the webinar that day. So if you want to take advantage of of a no quibble, uh, fourteen day money back guarantee, then do it today, guys. Because as I said, once it goes back up, it it won't happen. Thank you to all those that have signed up, and I know you're going to have a great time. And and I think between now and Christmas, there's just going to be so much that you guys will learn. Um, for the ones that have signed up, it it's just going to be. You know, you, you're just going to go to the next level, which will be brilliant. So thank you very much for that, guys. And as I said, uh, I will leave it open for a little while longer. Um, so get there if you can. That would be brilliant. Uh, it just leaves me to say, uh, don't forget to register while the, the special offer is still on. And I'll see you on the next webinar. So take care, guys, and I'll see you soon.